All righty. Looks like we're live. All right. Uh, hello, uh, CBB, CBBP. Uh, sorry if I could pronounce that right. Crap beers, uh, professionals, uh, people. Uh, I'm Phil, and uh, this is Spencer, and uh, we're with Aseptic Fruit Purees. Uh, Spencer is a guest brewer. He's done a lot of uh, media and, and uh, a lot of stuff, uh, the backgrounds of brewings, little ticks, tri uh, tricks and tips when it comes to purees and all this different brewing stuff for AFP. And so now he's with us today to discuss puree versus concentrates. So um, right now uh, we're going to introduce ourselves a little bit more in depth. Uh, I guess I'll start with myself. Uh, I'm Phil, my background, uh, I used to be a winemaker. I went to school for winemaking enology at Fresno State. I, uh, I was a winemaker at several facilities and including um, up in, uh, over in Sacramento, California, um, Fresno, California, um, several locations, Monterey, California, all over in California. Um, worked at a facility that was making bulk uh, brandy and all these different spirits. Um, and I fermented all different things that who knows, like, you know, things that you didn't even imagine you can ferment, like especially during COVID when you're trying to make the hand alcohol and, or, you know, the sanitizer and, and so, uh, you know, I was going through all sorts of stuff to make that stuff. So, and then uh, I eventually made my way into a brewery um, in Fresno and I was brewing beer for a while and then I got suckered into sales somehow, but uh, I've been loving it because I get to talk to you lovely people and, and interact and doing, uh, helping out with my experience uh, as well as uh, just seeing the cool stuff people make. So um, I'll let Spencer introduce himself a little bit. Go ahead, Spence. Yeah. Hey, y'all. I'm Spence. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I, I've been around a while. Uh, I've been with AFP for a while. Um, I started my career in England. I was out there for about three, three and a half years. Uh, ended up moving to uh, Georgia. Uh, worked on the packaging line like everybody else does and, and moved up and uh, became head brewer out there. Uh, made my way up to Ohio, worked in Columbus uh, for quite a few years uh, as a lead brewer, and then I uh, made myself a production manager in Dayton, Ohio uh, for the last few years. And, and then uh, just recently just left that job. Um, I'm currently doing some uh, military stuff right now, but uh, I will be, will be back to brewing. Don't worry. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, in the DC area. So, uh, short little plug for myself is, uh, anybody, anybody need a superstar like myself in DC, <laughs> uh, right. just, yeah. just give me a ring. But, yeah. uh, today we're not here to talk about me. We're definitely here to talk about <laughs> fruit. So, <laughs> That's great. And, uh, yeah. and I want to thank uh, uh, Craft Beers Professionals for having us and uh, appreciate uh, being out here to be able to talk about it. All right. Well, let's get started. Okay. First slide. Here we go. Um, what is puree and what is concentrate? Um, well, there's uh, several different things. I, I'm going based with a concentrate that... Um, it's pretty common in the industry, but I'm not going to mention any names uh, during this uh, just because it's it's about aseptic fruit purees uh, at the heart of it all, yeah. technically. But uh, but um, I just wanted to show the comparison because this is a question that, uh, you know, using puree or concentrate, a lot of us brewers think about and when we're trying to make uh, the next recipe and and try to look at costs as well as like, you know, what, what the end goal is. So I'm hoping that this whole conversation that Spencer and I are going to discuss and, you know, when you, if you want to chime in on any comments and questions uh, during this, I'll try to pay attention to those and answer. But that is a question that we both Spencer and I had to go do our research and figure out what's the best way to go about making the next recipe. So we're hoping this conversation will clear a lot of people's questions up when it comes to, should I go with concentrate or should I go with puree? So first of all, uh, puree, uh, if you haven't worked with it before, um, it is basically a uh, just the fruit blended up or ground up uh, into, you know, pureed 
per se, uh, uh, into a combination of pulp and the juice. Uh, and then our aseptic puree means that it is uh, uh, the microbes were basically pasteurized off. Um, so all the microbes are gone. So it made it shelf stable in our bags. Um, so then you could actually store it at room temperature at, at, for up to 18 months. Um, and but once you open it, you have to make sure that uh, that you refrigerate it or freeze it because it is no longer aseptic. You just exposed all the elements outside. Um, when it comes to concentrates, um, concentrates are extra pasteurized in a way. They're actually evaporated. They, uh, all the water was evaporated out to make this concentrated flavor. And uh, when it comes to like flavor of, of that fruit puree, it starts out, but then they also remove the solid. So you're basically concentrating more of the juice factor um, by the time it's all said and done. Um, so going over our purees compared to a concentrate that I've taken from a source that's pretty common in the beer industry. Um, so if I go over the ingredients, our ingredients in our puree is basically just fruit and ascorbic acid. We add a little bit of ascorbic acid um, it's about 0.02%, AKA 200 parts per million, um, ascorbic acid to help uh, help with oxidation during the aseptic process. So the aseptic process, it goes through a heat exchange where it rapidly heats up the puree to be able to kill all the microbes. And then it goes through a heat exchange again to rapidly cool down. So when it heats up, it does have an effect on the color and as an air exposure uh, and the whole when it was basically being ground up and putting through the tube. So we act, actually add ascorbic acid to help keep color retention um, and keep it as fresh as possible. And if ascorbic acid is the same thing as vitamin C. Now, when it comes to concentrates, um, they, uh, they basically, they, they take the fruit, they go through, um, well, I mean, never like, I used to work in the concentrate business. So this is kind of like what I'm grabbing from what happens with the concentrates grabbing from that um, at one point. Uh, so it's not exactly representing the, the, the company that I kind of got some of this information from. So it could be a little bit different, but from general concentrates, from what I know, um, basically they, they process the juice um, and then they basically put it in a evaporating pan. So they evaporate uh, as much of the, like, you know, water to a certain point. And then, um, and then they, you know, try to keep that color retention. So they have some things that they need to, you know, adjust the color with. They only want to cook it for so long and have all these variables. So uh, when you go over the ingredients uh, in this uh, concentrate that I found, um, looks like the top ingredient is cane sugar, then dextrose, fructose, fruit, natural flavoring, and plant extract. So when you evaporate and concentrate a juice, uh, you do lose some of the aromas and all that stuff. Um, so I think they want to, uh, when they want to reach a certain sugar level, um, they will, in this case, look like they added some cane sugar, dextrose and fructose to it to achieve that sugar level, that, con that sweetness without actually losing too much of the fruit. Because if you evaporate a fruit too long, you cook the fruit too long, you start losing, uh, losing the fruit characters. So that's why they redu reduced it. Uh, so they are able to try to keep the retention of the fruit a little bit better. Um, and then you see uh, they have a natural flavoring. Sometimes they take the evaporation uh, or the distillate, the, all the vapors that came off the juice, and they will actually uh, take uh, take the aromas and put it back into the product. Um, that way, you know, you're able to kind of retain that. Um, if you ever look at those uh, low calorie sodas that um, basically has like no sugar, no fruit added, but it has the essence of it. Well, that's where you get the essence of your sparkling sodas with, you know, with just water, you know, it's, but it has the essence of whatever fruit character, that's how you get that. So they sometimes could add that back natural flavoring. 
Um, and then plant extract. Um, plant extract, it can, it varies on what that could be. Um, I think it could be to help with color, they might actually add a natural plant dye. It's not really dye. I, I, I hate using the word dye, um, but they look just like they do. Like they, they wanted it, they put plant extract. And so you can get like a red color from beets and they concentrate the, the pigment from the beet and they're able to use it in other fruit products. Um, and it's not considered like one of those synthetic dyes. Uh, so that's basically uh, the gist of what I have there. And concentrates typically, I, I talk in bricks. Uh, I'm not sure what the what the specific gravity is, but concentrates are generally around 65, 70 bricks, which is pretty high. I like talking in bricks because I was a winemaker, first of all. <laughs> and also you could easily like take the bricks divided by two and that's your estimate ABV, right? So so anyway, uh, so concentrates are generally around like 65, 70 bricks. Um, purees, it's whatever the fruit bricks naturally is. So like mangoes could be like 20, 21, strawberries around like what, seven bricks, like, you know, low sugar. So anyway, in comparison of those two, that's kind of the gist of what concentrates versus purees are. You have any comments on that, Spence? Uh, the thing that stands out to me just, just right away is, um, like fruit is like fourth ingredient of, of the concentrates. So, uh, I guess I knew that, I guess I knew it was mostly sugar. I just, uh, uh, just seeing it, um, <laughs> is kind of crazy to see that it's like not mostly fruit. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then as far as, oh, I was going to say, and then as far as bricks go, it's pretty similar to Play-Doh. I know there's a conversion, but like, mm -hmm. it's it's like decimal places off. So, uh, yeah. For for those of you that are using Play-Doh, uh, if he's using bricks, it's it's <laughs> fractions off. So, like a seventy brick thing is like a you know seventy five ish Play-Doh yeah. uh, concentrate. Right, right. Specific gravity. I don't remember what the conversion is on that, but basically bricks is like, um, I believe it's one gram per 1000 grams of, of liquid. So one gram sucrose yeah. for, for a thousand grams liquid or something like that. So anyway, that's, that's what degree bricks are. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's, they they add a little sugar. I mean, some concentrates they don't add sugar. It's whatever sugar is left in the fruit. I mean, and it varies. But if you think about it, this it goes in order of by weight. So right. yeah, so cane sugar weighs a lot. So that's probably why it's up on top. But anyway, that's how that works. All right. So uh, I want to go a little bit into production. This is where Spence can share his his experience as well as I'll share mine. I mean, when it comes to production and how easy and convenient concentrate is, it's pretty obvious. Uh, it's just poured in and it kind of just melds into the beer and kind of incorporates with it where puree is a little bit more complicated having to work around uh, the solids. Um, sometimes you might need to add an enzyme to help break down the pectins. Uh, and then try to pump or pour it in, depending on how much you're adding. Um, and then having to settle those solids too, all throughout that process. So, um, so anyway, like in generally speaking, when you're adding purees, uh, depending on your batch, like, you know, you could um, pump it in or pour it in um, and then dealing with the solids too, that kind of, can vary on your pump type of pump that you that you use in your brewery. Uh, believe it or not, I've actually pumped with a centrifugal pump the puree out of a drum, and that was you know it didn't and it you know had to uh, charge the pump in a way. Uh, so I had to backflow the beer into the pump until I reached the drum, yeah. and then I was able to <laughs> reverse the flow yeah, and then finally pull the beer into the. That's definitely a scary process because that's how that's how I've always done it too with the drums. And you know, those drums are full. Right? They're already, yeah. you know, you have about an inch of room at the top. And when you have to prime that pump, you have to backflow that beer in. 
uh, and turn that pump on and hope it starts pumping before before it starts overflowing. Um, definitely, uh, we used to use two people just to make sure it was a little bit safer, but I've definitely done it by myself and uh, it's it's scary. You know? um. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, you know, it's a two man job kind of thing. And then if it's if your pump is uh, kind of, you know, I've I had a pump that where the the control panel was a bit sketchy, and only my variable yeah. speed didn't work anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, you know, it's it's been through some abuse, but like having to, you know, and then if you're if you're over there sca staged away from the tank and having to work valves and like go one way to the other way and have <laughs> like having to run, I right, had to right. do that a couple of times. Like, and, and sometimes I had to do it by myself, like just depends on how your brewery set up, but, but it's been interesting. And then uh, having to pour it in, you know, uh, those are 44 pound bags, which I've had to do, you know, when I didn't, when they didn't have drums and I had to add it to a 60 barrel brew, that was a lot right. of bags I had to open and go on top of the tank and pour yeah. and just like, Oh man, it's a lot of work, but yeah. Uh, I've definitely done that before too. And we're like, uh, maybe I'm on a scissor lift and the scissor lift can't hold that much weight. So you have to do <laughs> like multiple trips up and, um, uh, well now, now AFP has the easy open, uh, the the easy open uh bags mm -hmm. uh but before the bags were so hard to open and we would just knife them open but then your pour isn't you know even and you're just getting puree all over the top of the tank and uh you know you're you're struggling especially uh you know if you have somebody up there that's not super strong and they're shaking up there like <laughs> trying to hold uh, 44 yeah. pounds high enough to to get into a two inch port you know like it's mm -hmm. it can definitely be uh, a mess to to have to try to do 20 boxes 30 boxes of of puree yeah the nice thing about the bags is that they're easier to grip and but if you're adding concentrate and pouring it in and you're using the 60 pound buckets now oh, that yeah. was where I struggled. I had to add like what about five buckets to 60 barrels or something like oh, or quite a yeah. few of those. And then they're buckets, right? They're not the bags. So they they want to suck air into it and go glut, 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 like try to pour it in there. So at one point I just got sick of it and just like just stabbed the top with the <laughs> knife just so it could pull some air so I could actually like Cause it would take forever and I'm like trying to hold it in an awkward position from the yeah. scissor lift and like <laughs> over into the top. And so I'm just like, man, that was, that was way worse than having to do a bunch of bags of, of puree in my opinion. But you know, I was like, yeah, at that point I should have just got a, you know, a little, um, one of those kegs, uh, you transfer in one of those, um, Oh yeah. Like, uh, those cakes. yeah. The one well, we used to use that. yeast brinks uh for, yeah, for something the else. brinks yeah that's exactly so, so i was like i should have just used that big opening yeah <laughs> yeah no well well you say that and i'm thinking i'm now thinking the same thing of oh yeah that would have been easier to pump anything in and we're just sitting there on a scissor lift all right i'll, I'll keep that in my back pocket <laughs> well the, the bummer thing is is sometimes breweries only have one pump and somebody else mm -hmm. you know or like right, you know right. might be doing another operation and so you're kind of limited yeah. in what you're doing and you're like well right. i'm going to add hops anyway while i'm up there so once <laughs> you have the tank open you might as well just go get it all done right 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 <laughs> dry hopping it right just depends on when you're adding it it's all all about the process there but yeah yeah it's sure. uh it's one of those things where you know you, you uh find your different ways of doing it and whatever works for your brewery. But we have a connection with flex flux pump. Um, these guys are really cool. Um, so we have a little partnership there. They're, uh, these guys are actually in Georgia as well. That's how we're connected uh, the main hub there, but they have these cool uh, gravity or oh, what? Sorry. Um, cavity displacement pump that basically can go directly in the barrel all the way to the bottom oh. has a little breather thing. So, and then, yeah, you just hook it up with the hose that top um, motor actually detaches. So everything 
It's like you can clean it out and use that motor for different uh, attachments. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. They have all sorts of cool stuff. So we're actually partnered up with them for anybody looking for a pump um, that, you know, basically makes life a lot easier. Um, for anything that they're trying to transfer, that thing will pump anything. Uh, it could even pump like thick, thick stuff. Like I, they told me like, well, we haven't, you know, other than solids, we haven't seen anything that couldn't pump, right? <laughs> so some pretty sludgy uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if you That's, ever use uh, one of those pumps. No, I, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I'll have to take a look at them. Yeah, so uh, the so the uh, the um, the cavity displacement is actually at the bottom of the drum, so it doesn't need priming or anything. It just starts sucking right then, right there, and then uh, so it has this shaft that goes all the way down the center and starts pumping from the bottom of the drum, and basically, you know, just will bring it wherever you need to go. So, uh, so yeah, it's so yeah. you can go across, and then all the controls is right there by the drum. So. It uh, makes life easier, that's for sure. So that's why we have that yeah. option there. So if you are interested in pumps for any of, any of you guys watching this, uh, yeah, hit me up or hit up AFP, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we can discuss the equipment that you need to help make your life easier. Let's see. All right, we're doing pretty good on time. Well, now here's the big discussion <laughs> of flavor. This is what it really – what the biggest deciding factor of puree versus concentrate really is. I mean, like, you know, it, like this is what makes it worth the, the labor of love of putting that puree in because the flavor is the biggest thing that makes it worthwhile. Um, how about we'll go with Spence's interpretation of flavors between concentrates and, uh, yeah. cause I, yeah, for sure. For sure. I'll, uh, um, I think there's a time and a place for both. And, and I think a lot of times using both can help uh, a flavor um, uh, or bring out a full, more rounded flavor if you use both. Um, that said, I, I do prefer a puree. Um, any day of the week, I could use just a puree and be perfectly happy but I don't know if I would use just a concentrate and be perfectly happy. Um, I think there's something, there's something missing in a concentrate that you, that you get with a puree. Um, I know we talked about that there's 20% solids and, and I think those solids uh, can definitely make, make a difference um, in the flavor. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. I, I, uh, I, I say it's just the vegetative matter and I don't want to say it's a vegetative taste. Um, but I, I've always equated it to uh, the difference between using hops versus hop extract, right? Like there's, there's definitely a, a flavor you get with hops that that's missing in a hop extract. If you made a beer, a hundred percent hop extract, you, you, you'd know something was off. You may not be able to pinpoint it, but you would know something is off. Um, so uh, I I think those solids make a difference in in the flavor, and maybe it could just be the processing too, where a concentrate is way more processed, uh, and so maybe you're getting a more of a, a I don't want to say fake, but a fake flavor uh, in a concentrate. Um, again, not to say that's a bad thing. Uh, I, I think you can definitely round it out. Um, I know, uh, you and I have discussed it before with, uh, certain flavors, uh, where concentrate may be necessary. Uh, peach, peach is definitely a good one in my book, um, mm -hmm. where I think, uh, peach, peach by itself is a very delicate flavor. So once it's fermented, uh, there's, there's something missing. And if you add that concentrate, uh, it could kind of round that out and bring out more of that peach flavor in the, in the puree. Uh, but at the same time, if you just use peach concentrate, uh, it's going to taste like the, the peach ring candy or, or can taste, I should say. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of brands of concentrates out there that all taste different, but in my experience, at least. Yeah. Like I, I uh, definitely agree completely with that. Uh, like, you know, there's, 
there is advantages of using concentrates and there's advantages of using purees and uh, flavor is basically what really makes uh, makes your beer, right? That's the whole goal is to try to pinpoint a certain flavor that you just, it's great. Like, you know, uh, so in my, my comparisons, concentrate definitely gives you more of that candy flavor. It's like, you know, sweeter, um, you know, uh, it has like a little bit, you know, more of that pie, you know, cooked Mm -hmm. baked, you know, flavor to it, which isn't always a bad thing, but, you know, but if you're looking for more of a fresh fruit, you got to go the puree route. And what the major thing is that, you know, when, with the concentrate, it's so sweet and it's been, you know, it, you actually lose the acidity, like you lose the, uh, like that fresh fruit acidic character. Mm, Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a sweet, then concentrate is that way. But, uh, but if you want some of that complexity of the fruit where you have the acidity, you have a little bit more of that bitterness from the rind, um, stuff like that, or, or pulp. Um, and even, uh, with the fruit character, it actually helps with uh, mouthfeel, uh, with the purees, um, it helps with he- head retention compared to concentrates, uh, because there is that pulpiness to it, um, that, that helps keep it there. Um, and so like, yeah, when it comes to flavors, um, Like you said, some some of the purees, some of the fruits are naturally a little bit softer in flavor. Um, Like guava could be a little bit softer in flavor at times um, or or, uh, peach and all that stuff where you might want to add a little concentrate to it so then you can have a little bit more presence of that flavor or strawberry is actually another one too. That one, I've I've done a little bit of both. Where strawberry, like you think the puree is going to be nice packed full of flavor, but it's not as much as you think. And then, so you supplement it a little bit with a, with a concentrate to help bring that strawberry character, but you still have that acidity and and natural strawberry character as well. Um, Then just go in like pure concentrate or pure puree. So, uh, but yeah, that's, but uh, having a little bit of both or just one or the other. Now, there's flavors that I definitely would go all puree. Like if I wanted to put banana in there, I'm not going to, I don't know about you, but I, I would not go with a concentrate <laughs> banana character. I hate no. banana candy. No. Like yeah. just because it yeah. just tastes so bleh. And, and right, right, right. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. lemon. Uh, lemon. Oh, I yeah. Would, well, yeah. lemon, I want I, that acid in there where concentrate right. lemon uh, is sugary. <laughs> I, I'm glad you brought up acidity because when you think about the fruits that are uh, better in just puree form, they tend to be more acidic. So like all of your citrus fruits, so your lemon, your lime, your orange, blood orange, things like that. Like those, I feel like I don't know if I've ever used a concentrate of those flavors. I feel like I've only used puree uh but that's probably because of the acidity. Like if you don't have the acidity of the lemon or the lime or the orange, it's going to taste very artificial. Um, whereas, you know, your more delicate flavors aren't as acidic. And, and so maybe that's where that concentrate matters. Uh, yeah. and then on the banana, I, I agree with you too. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if I've used banana concentrate, but like it just would remind me of like banana Laffy Taffy or (laughs) or banana runts where uh, I feel like that's what it would taste like. I could be wrong. I haven't used the concentrate, but like I think you're right where um, I've uh, I've consistently ordered banana from AFP uh, because we had a banana Hefeweizen and we would just use uh, a ton of banana in, in that thing. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, like, I mean, those are basically the major flavor differences. And so when it comes to try to add those characters, yeah, it's, it's, you know, one or the other, but, or both, you know, so it's just, uh, right. Yeah. So let's move on to some flavor trends. See how, how the United States is, uh, what, what flavors are going. So up here I have, um, 
some flavor trends from uh, for the United States from last year and the beginning of this year. And so, uh, and I have Canada up to, or that's going to be on the next slide, but it looks like the top seller last year was uh, strawberry, pink guava, and mango. And now pineapple has risen up the beginning of this year so far. So that's pretty interesting yeah. within itself. Um, and then, uh, yeah, blackberry is kind of knocked itself down. Maybe that's a, uh, maybe because we're not in that season yet or something that Blackberry people are getting yeah. into, but uh, you know, it's that's, still early uh, the, when I saw these lists, they, they definitely surprised me, uh, especially last year's list uh, to have strawberry on top. Uh, and I do like, uh, I, I can enjoy a strawberry wheat or, you know, a strawberry lager or something like that. But to have that as the, the, the top selling fruit um, is it seems wild to me, um, but it could just be the region that I'm in is not a big mm -hmm. strawberry heavy area or that because I don't use it. It surprises me, uh, but that was the one that surprised me. Guava and mango and pineapple. I definitely agree with from my experience. I, I think uh, mango for me, I can see everybody using it. I th think it's a, uh, I think it complements uh, a lot of the newer hops. Like all the hops that come out now are mango, guava, tropical fruit type of thing. So uh, I can see that. But the, yeah, it was definitely the strawberry that, that surprised me. Yeah, it's funny that you say that you're on the East Coast, right? Well, I don't have it up yeah. here, but I have the East versus the West. And actually, the East Coast it was that was the one that uh, was the top seller was strawberry on the East Coast. West Coast was pink guava. Really? <laughs> so it. it's everybody on the East Coast, but I, right. like you yeah. know, but uh. AFP aseptic fruit purees isn't just the beer industry too. Like we're actually sure. getting quite a bit in the food industry um, as well. Like you know, ice cream and and uh, a lot of different like bakeries and even the um, the cannabis industry, uh, a lot of a lot of them are using uh, our fruit purees for flavoring, and uh, it was cool. I was even talking to one of the customers, and he's making uh, like a cigar wraps out of really? purees. Like he, he he has like some sort of patent, like drying ability with the with the puree, and practically making yeah like you know one of those fruit leathers, but smokable like as a cigar wow. so he's yeah, like that's, oh, okay that's well, crazy interesting so yeah like you know so it's it, that industry is getting quite creative and there's like a lot of the beverages and all that stuff that are using it as well so i guess like well technically this is what our sale reflection is but you know it's not just right. brewing um and it's also like you know we sell the wineries meaderies cideries right um you know all the anything that uses our puree puree is natural even though we do most of our marketing towards the beer industry <laughs> right right and, and i guess that i guess that makes sense it makes a little more sense in my brain that like some of these uh would be better or not not better suited but they they would be more popular in in other industries than not necessarily ours or mine yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but that's uh, how things are going. So I think pineapple has been moving quite quickly this year. So it looks like that's one of the things going on. You know, and as people are starting to experiment more with the non-alcoholic options, because that's how the trend's going, as everybody knows, uh, it's been, we've been getting a lot more sales in that regard too. Uh, there's, it's not as much fruit beers as it is like just non-alcoholic beverages. We are ginger is almost is practically sold out like we might just have a few boxes left and um uh, and so and we're waiting on another order of that but yeah that's another thing so here's canada canada last year raspberry number one and yeah. looks like raspberry starting this year too <laughs> yeah yeah so so it looks like they're they're moving forward and then pink guava and mango passion fruit is going up there this year too, starting out. And uh, yeah, 
And then, of course, pineapple was last year, but pineapple's been moved down quite a bit. So, yeah, it's interesting to see just just across the border how um, how much of a difference that makes. Th this list actually makes a little more sense to me from a from a brewing standpoint than than the other list. Um, but uh, at the beginning of this year, I mean, you see strawberry still in the top five. Um, mm -hmm. But raspberry, guava, passion fruit, like, yeah, those are, uh, those are definitely like the the main fruits I would I would expect. And I see blood orange. I, you know, I'm surprised I don't see blood orange higher. I feel like everybody loves blood orange. But, right. Yeah, but I guess it's just the volume that they need to actually do anything. Like you know. They might not need to dose as much blood orange as they need to with the other flavors. So for sure. But anyway, uh, yeah. So we're, uh, what I like to touch base on now is our kind of our, our personal predictabilities of, of uh, flavor trends this year and, and product trends. Um, so what I've researched, researched and noticed was uh, some of the flavor trends that, you know, people are starting to do a little bit more floral, like hibiscus or lavender in their beers uh, this year, in the beverages, and then heading towards the non-alcoholic options. Uh, people are making their own sodas. So just basic, just um, taking puree and or concentrate and adding sugar and water and carbonating it and putting it on tap as a non-alcoholic option or lemonades. They'll do take lemon puree um, and sugar and water and put it on tap um, and mix with whatever berry character, maybe make a pink lemonade or stuff like that. Ginger beer, uh, mocktail stuff. Um, yeah, those kind of things too. So, I mean, there's there's been several several things where people just try to go that that route to um, help keep with what's popular um, and of course seltzers um, too but uh, but I've also in the trends too I, that I researched and I've actually seen a little bit is people are going the nostalgic flavor route so like think of all the stuff you used to have when you're a kid like for instance, I saw an example of somebody was trying to mess with, like, do something around the flavor of, have you ever had those uh, mud cups as a kid where you have, like, the chocolate oh, yeah. thing and then you put the gummy worms in, all, in there? And all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Like, so, so they're, like, bringing ideas back like that. Or, like, you know, remember the the uh, the Sobe drinks where with the oh, carrot yeah. and, and orange? Yeah. So, so anyway. Uh, yeah, stuff like that, and bringing back these old flavors, cactus cooler, you know, maybe bring it back. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, like fruitopia, fruit punch, stuff like that. So that's everybody's kind of going the nostalgic route when it comes to these flavors and bringing them back. Um, I even did a beer that was uh, kind of towards uh, that sherbet push pops. Okay. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool where it was like a blend of pineapple, raspberry, and I think it was orange. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and okay. A beer. And it turned out pretty good. It was a sour, so it, it made it made it sherberty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty it was pretty good. It actually turned out really nice. But uh but what are what have you uh seen and heard? Yeah, um well, you, you mentioned ginger, and, and I do think ginger is uh, a, a big one for sure, especially with, um, you know, you can make your ginger beer. Uh, on the alcohol side, you have RTDs, so, you know, you would have ginger in, in a mule or uh, in the, even in the beer, like a mule beer type, mule-inspired beer. Um if we're going the the, the non-alcoholic side, like your citrus fruits, I think do well. Your your lemon, your lime, your orange, I, I think those are the good like soda flavors. Um, even like the kombucha side, like I I like uh, personally I like the citrus flavors. 
but um so, so i definitely see that um it, it's funny that you mentioned uh the carrot sobe uh because i, I i've used carrot before um i i wish a puree had existed when i did it um we, we had a it was a collaboration beer and and so we just had wild ideas it was, it was carrot ginger uh, and we didn't do use ginger puree either. So it's a lot of processing of, of food, but we probably had a couple hundred pounds of, of carrots that we had to cook, boil, and then puree with like a, like a hand blender. And, uh, it, it took all day cause it, it was just the kitchen of the brewery and they only have pots so big. You can only fit like 30 carrots in a pot and there was probably a couple hundred few hundred carrots and just boiling them till they're soft enough to puree and then it took up the, the entire cone of the of the fermenter so the entire cone was just carrot puree uh <laughs> and it was such a mess and like we had carrot chunks that maybe didn't get blended all the way get stuck in the butterfly valves and everything like that so uh a carrot puree although i would probably use carrot again i wouldn't if i had to uh uh hand process that yeah. well uh, spence you're in <laughs> luck we have carrot puree in our inventory yeah and aseptic fruit puree so we do have yeah, that I'm, option now <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm taking note of that yeah i may need to retry that that beer with with uh an easier method Maybe uh, do that Sobe carrot orange drink. Right, or right, right. Uh, <laughs> and ginger, uh, there's different ways I know people process ginger, but we've always, well, the way I've always done it is you, you have to peel the ginger mm -hmm. and then slice it and put it in, the, in your beer. Um, and ginger is such an awkward shape. So, uh, you know, you almost got to put it through it, a cheese grater. Yeah. Yeah. It's such an awkward shape to, to peel it. And depending yeah. on your size, like if you're a couple barrels, a few barrels, it's probably okay. But, um, I was at a brewery, we had 120 barrel fermenters and it was, I don't know, a box. So probably 40, 50 pounds of ginger that you're, you're peeling and mm -hmm. then cutting up. And so a puree, a box puree definitely would have worked, but, uh, <laughs> that's just my experience working with stuff. I never probably want to work with again in a puree would help. But, uh, but as far as flavors go, like I do think like with the non-alcoholic sector, uh, kind of on the rise and the RTD section and seltzer section kind of doing its thing. Like you're, uh, I would see a more of a rise of your lemon, your lime, your, your citrus fruits. Uh, yeah, what would be my guess? That would be yeah, my guess. exactly. Yeah, that is true. And uh, and I've even seen a brewery starting to make more kombucha and do those options as well. Yeah, and making different flavors that way. Um, so like I think somebody put a little passion fruit and some kombucha, and they they asked if uh, if we had any um, any hibiscus or any any flower extracts, and we currently don't. But uh, but we're actually. Um, we're progressing forward uh, in, in a way uh, that we're kind of we're hoping by 2025 that we're going to have some concentrates uh, available at aseptic fruit purees. So we're, we're actually waiting on equipment uh, for that and then uh, try to dial things in and dial some recipes in. And that's what we're progressing forward is concentrates. Uh, yeah. Uh, to have that as another option, especially how things are going. So uh, with the, you know, cost of shipping and all that stuff. Well, yeah, for sure. And, uh, uh, just having a company that has both, to be honest, uh, just thinking from my, my production manager side, like when you have to order ingredients from a thousand different places, it makes it hard. Uh, mm -hmm. but it's good that y'all are getting into the concentrate business. Cause like, like we talked about earlier, like there are certain flavors that you need both. So to be able to, and if it's coming from the same fruit, then the flavors should match relatively well too. I would, I would think so. Yeah. 
So when it comes down to trying to really what it comes down to when you're really trying to teeter between one or the other is the cost. And uh, I just I'm not going to go into the details of exact prices, but I'm going to try to talk through how to kind of really calculate what your cost will actually be comparing the concentrate versus uh, puree. So uh, here I have costs like I'm going to use the example of pineapple. Uh, like uh, since it was kind of one of those top seller ones um, and calculating that because I was using both dosage rates for mine, our, our pineapple puree versus the concentrate. And this is kind of what I got here. So uh, for us, we recommend a range of 0.5 to 1.5 pounds per gallon. Um, and of course it goes on what your goal is, what your flavor preference is and how strong a pineapple you want. For the concentrates, it's like I have an extra decimal there. <laughs> um, it's 0 0.044 to 0 0.088 pounds per gallon. Um, I, I converted, you know, they had it in ounces and per 10 gallons or something like that, or, or at a percentage dosage rate. So I put it in term in the same unit in comparison of how much you're actually adding pound per gallon of beer. Um, so I did the mid range, uh, just to cal gonna put some calculations in perspective there. So one pound per gallon mid range uh, is like 0 0.069 pounds per gallon for concentrates. Um, puree can have about 10 to 20 percent solids. Just depends on the fruit. Like so, if you have a mango puree, that's going to be about 20 percent solids. If you have citrus, that uh, actually has much less solids uh, to worry about. It's more juice than solids and those purees. Um, so that's a variable within itself. Um, and then concentrate pretty much has no, no solids to worry about. Um, but at this uh, dosage rate, the percent volume that you actually are gonna gain from the product, from puree is gonna add uh, about 10% more volume to your batch compared to concentrate, it's only gonna be a half a percent more volume. So, uh, and that 10% is actually included with like after the solids have been removed, like it have, has settled. So that's like, it's going to be 10% more in your product. So when you're calculating, you want to uh, like, you know, your cost, you want to kind of take that into consideration and that that's that much more product that you're going to gain from it compared like, you know, so then you actually start to see some of that investment return. Um, in that percentage. So you can uh, expect a 10% increase in your yield um, when it comes to that. And then, so in that regard, uh, so say if you're doing a 10 barrel batch, you'll have to, you know, this is what you expect out of each one. Uh, you'd need to get six to seven boxes of pineapple um, at that dosage rate or two 10 pound boxes or tubs of the concentrate. So you'd be typically shipping 308 pounds of puree versus 20 pounds of puree. And depending on how close you are to where the warehouse is that they're stored at. And, and like, you know, that could be a hefty bill or not, not so hefty at all. Um, but when it comes to cost, there are Th like items that, yeah, it would be maybe more expensive to do puree or more expensive to do concentrate or they're roughly the same. It just depends on the product. So um, when it comes to actually cost, like, you know, it's, it's at most times like, you know, concentrate is a little bit cheaper just because it's, you don't have to pay as much shipping. Um, but and your dosage rate's a little smaller, but it, you know, like, you know, when you compare, when you're crunching your numbers, you got to take these into consideration because it's concentrates, not going to always be the cheap option, you know, purees not going to always be the cheap option either. You know, sometimes again, it's a give and take. So, um, but you know, when it comes down to it, what are you going to decide? You know, like, are you going to spend that little extra money to, to reach the flavor character that you need? Most likely, yes. Brewers are in it for passion. They're in it for what the flavor truly means. If that means they have to spend a little bit more for one or the other to achieve that, to make 
that signature art, you know, it's an art, you know, it's a flavor that you're going for. So yeah, the, you know, uh, when it comes to the cost, you know, to, breweries will not sacrifice on flavor when it comes to that, you know, right? So I don't know. What are your thoughts, Spencer? Yeah. Uh, through, through my experience, I, I, I definitely agree. Like there's, there's beers where your pur puree is going to cost more and there's beers where your concentrate is going to cost more. Um, I, I've really found that like, if you take all your beers that use some type of fruit, whether it be puree or concentrate and you, uh, you kind of do the math throughout the year. It, it really doesn't make too big of a difference. Um, I I've done some cost analysis for beer, had to, you know, do my cost analysis to give to either ownership or accounting or shareholders or whoever works at the brewery that looks at those numbers. Uh, and when I do that, sometimes you go, oh, I got to cut a little bit of cost here. Or I got to cut a little bit of cost there. But uh, I found fruit isn't normally the, the biggest factor in that, um, especially when you talk about uh, that 10 percent more. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, if that means like if, if you look at shipping, yeah, I paid whatever, two hundred dollars in shipping. Well, if you got an extra keg out of it there's your $200 right there. You know, like it's, mm -hmm. if you get more than that, if you're getting multiple kegs out of it, then you're, you're definitely making your money back somewhere uh, in that. So, so I think in that sense, like when you look at it, like they even out, it just depends on the, the flavor that you're going for and what you're trying to achieve in the beer. Um, if you're trying to achieve that uh, kind of more natural, uh, uh, flavor and aesthetic of the beer, then, then yeah, the, the purees make sense. And if you're just going for pure ease and uh, maybe just hinting at some things, hinting at some flavors, uh, rounding out some flavors, then and your concentrates make more sense. So, um, you know, I, I don't think cost sh should be your deciding point. I, I think definitely, like you said, like, Brewers are in this for the flavor of the beer. So it depends on just what you're trying to achieve and definitely just use what is best for you and not necessarily what is best for, for the, the checkbook there. Because I can tell you through, through the 10 years I've been doing this, like it, it doesn't matter uh, cost wise, <laughs> it, you know, cost wise, you're, you're going to break even either way. You know, if it's a good beer, like, you know, of course you're going to put the appropriate price on your, on your beverage. Uh, like, you know, you got to beat your cost. You got to make your, your dime as well. And, but usually most customers are willing to pay for that higher quality. And uh, so when you're making these beers, it, it's, you know, it's, you're not exactly making it out of gold, but if you're looking to make a cheap beer, maybe not add fruit to it. It's probably the best way to go if you're going to be that. <laughs> that uh that cost conscious yeah. in a way uh but yeah. you know but people like they're doing all sorts of things and it's it's uh it's uh beer can be a blank canvas you can make it basic or you make it crazy awesome flavor and uh complexity and all that stuff adding blending doing all this uh different ingredient stuff it, it's it's what makes it fun so yeah. and uh and so we uh we're trying to dabble in different ingredients as well and, and having different options available yes aseptic fruit purees does have aseptic vegetable purees as well uh that we could also source we actually have items that we can source that is not actually on our website uh, so for anybody that's wanting to try a certain flavor shoot an email to your aseptic fruit rep, whether it's me or Nick or Manny or Alex, um, you know, uh, see if we can get that for you. Um, because, you know, we, we actually manufacture our purees come out of Colombia, Colombia and Mexico. And we, um, and so we actually bring a certain amount of inventory in the United States to keep, you know, stored for our customers here in the United States and as well as Canada. And it, they're basically items based on what we 
our customers need and what the demand is. But uh, but that doesn't mean our manufacturer doesn't have other stuff that we can't get for you. So um, we just have to special order it and do all that stuff. But but hey, we can source it. So and if it seems to be a trending item, then we might bring it in to, to keep it here and store it here. So then you have a better turnaround uh, when it comes to your orders and no minimum order quantity, you know. So that's the nice thing about us keeping the stuff here is that there's no minimum order quantity. But yeah, when it comes to concluding about purees versus concentrates, I shrug and say it's really up to the brewer. Um, just like you're saying, like you could use a combo, you could use one or the other. I think uh, purees is better base wise where concentrates just might be a little bit more supplemental. Um, you know, you don't want it to be the overpowering main flavor. Um, purees, it could be, you can have it a little bit more impactful in your beer, you know, because it does taste like a fruit juice, you know, so rather than a syrup, you know, <laughs> so, so just, uh, but the concentrates can help boost that flavor a little bit more. Um, to get more of that presence in there. So, um, but anyway, I don't really see any questions in the comments, but uh, if you're looking to uh, order any fruit purees, uh, this is uh, how you can contact us. Go to our website, aseptecfruitpurees.com. Um, you can email info at aseptecfruitpurees. Uh, that way um, you could, you know, you could uh, send your questions and all that stuff. And then basically, well, one of the reps will respond to you um, depending on your area. And then of course you can call the number. And if you're going to CBC, we'll be at booth 747. So, but, uh, but anyway, um, yeah. Is there anything else, anything else uh, you want to comment on or? No, no. Uh, I just, you know, uh, I just want to say like, uh, you know, again, just talk about what you were saying. Um, if you need anything, contact aseptic fruit purees. Uh, I try not to annoy them too much, but you know, <laughs> if I need anything, they can get it for me. And, uh, and I, I know they're not treating me special. Uh, it may, it may seem like it, but I know they're not <laughs> treating me special. They treat everybody like they treat me, yeah. uh, like a King. So, uh, just, just contact them. They'll make. They'll treat you right. They'll make sure you get what you need. Uh, and if they can't, they will. They will figure it out. They. They will get you. They will make sure they get you what you need. So. Perfect. Yeah. And um, you know, technically, I'm I'm the West Coast guy. I'm the West Coast rep. But uh, but usually all the technical questions uh, go my way. So if you even have any brewing like problems to solve, um, I did brush lightly on the pectin um, idea. And so if you have issues with clarity um, in your beer or or even just, you know, some problems that, you know, that that arise that are kind of funky that you never seen before, like, why is my biofine not clearing out my, my beer? Why is, you know, uh, why did all my flavors like seem to settle to the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, kind of thing. I've had that happen before. Yeah. Um, and so like stuff like that, like I, I could have a bunch of knowledge that I've, I've worked with fruit quite a while now and, uh, and knowing how to solve problems because I've seen quite a bit of them. And so, you know, anytime that you need help with anything, any, anybody that's watching this, like, yeah, feel free to reach out to us. We'll, we'll help out with any issues and try to help solve that problem for you and with tips and tricks and, and whatever. And I could tap into, I got a bunch of beer friends that could also help out. We're willing to do that for free. We don't charge yeah, and, for consulting. And, uh, I could be wrong. I I'm pretty sure your website also has, um, like there's a frequently asked question, but I think there's like an educational, uh, there's a blog that, that talks about a bunch of stuff. And then there's some, some educational stuff that, uh, may or may not have yours truly uh, <laughs> talking yeah, about, doing talking those about how, videos. To do, how to do some things. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, not, <laughs> you know, since you're not official, like employee of ours, like, you know, <laughs> They, they could watch all that stuff and everything in, in their own time. But if they need somebody in person to talk to, they can <laughs> that is true. That is true. But yeah. but anyway, um, 
but yeah, there is a lot of those, like we do have resources on our website. Um, and the frequently asked uh, questions slash resources you can go to that section on our website. And then there's a lot of articles of different things, different tips and tricks. There's all the, our spec sheets and all that stuff uh, for each puree and uh, even some recipes like for seltzer or, um, or non-alcoholic beverages or wine, like how to make wine from our purees. And, and so there's some of those things. And then of course there's all the contact info for any questions that anybody has. So, well, cool. Well, it's been a pleasure uh, talking yeah. about fruit purees versus concentrates. And yeah, we're uh, AFP is looking to start carrying concentrates, hopefully uh, starting next year after we get all the equipment dialed in. We're also starting to carry um, extracts. That's going to be starting to showcase at the CBC. Um, and so I've yet to even try them. I just heard this recently that we're going to be doing some extracts nice. as well in our inventory. Um, and then uh, we're actually trying to get some more organic options up and going as we speak as well. So hopefully we'll have some more organic puree options coming up this summer. We're just waiting on all the certifications to happen in the harvest to come in. So, yeah, we're, we're getting there. But, uh, yeah, some a lot of new stuff as we're going on. So, anyway, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Spencer, for joining yeah, us no, here thanks, today. Thanks for inviting me. This was this was good. That yeah. hour went by quick. I feel yeah, like. it did. I, we ended up just chatting it up, and I was all thinking, well, I hope I have enough things to talk about <laughs> for an hour. But uh, you know what? I guess it's an easy subject to talk about more than I yeah. thought. So, all right. Well, I uh, appreciate everyone, and uh, and hope to hear from uh, from you guys soon. So, yep. all right. All right. Well, take care. See ya.